if you want to either retire or just maybe keep working because you want to, not because you have to, you absolutely must have a plan in place to deal with that debt Mm -hmm. and your retirement accounts when you're retired, also known as taxes. What is your plan? What are you doing to take over control of the debt on your retirement accounts instead of just sitting there and letting the IRS do its thing? This is Retirement Today. I'm your co-host, Zach Holcomb, and alongside me, we have Michael Reese, certified financial planner, retirement planning expert, and founder and president of Centennial Advisors. Today's show is all about the questions that you have to answer if you want to make work optional. In our last segment, we talked about the amount of income you need to generate to step away from your job and make work optional. But now, I know you're really excited about this discussion, Mike. We're talking about taxes. Oh, yeah. You know I love taxes. Yes. Or maybe we could say, I have this love hate relationship with taxes. Yes, on both sides of the spectrum. It's a lot of love and a lot of hate. Well, I hate the fact that we pay a ridiculous amount of tax because our federal government are a bunch of morons. Yes. And they they can't balance a checkbook, right? And and they have no desire to. They're like a bunch of freaking teenage kids with their first credit card and mommy and daddy are happy to pay all the bills. Right. Uh, So I hate that. In fact, I'm going to get my face red and go crazy. (laughs) What I love, on the other hand, I love putting together strategies to help people legitimately and legally pay less tax. Right. So that's, that's, I like that. That's fun. I love that. Let's talk about some of those. So, so that's what I want to talk about here is if you want work to be optional, then you need to know, you need to decide how are you going to manage your tax liability in retirement? So I kind of, in the first segment, a little bit earlier on the show, we talked a little bit about a couple I was talking to in the office the other day. They had, it was like 1.3, 1.4 million in their 401k. Yes. And so let's imagine, I mean, think about yourself. I mean, you, you might have more than that in your 401k. You might have less than that. You know, it doesn't really matter. Here's what matters. What matters is, you know, when you have this money in your 401k, you know, you look at your statement. So this couple, let's call them. I got to come up with a new name. I so want to say Fred and Wilma Flintstone. I'm not allowed to because of copyright or something. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll go with uh, a fic- Let's say a hypothetical couple named Barney and Betty. Okay, gotcha. Well, never heard of them. But well, never heard of them, and they are not related to Fred and Wilma at all. <laughs> but we're going with Barney and Betty. Yes. And let's imagine that Barney and Betty have, they come to see me or someone, you know, one of the advisors on the team here, Mm -hmm. and they say, hey, I'm looking to make work optional. I want to retire potentially, and I want to structure my finances in a way that makes sense. And one of the things they're worried about are taxes. And they bring in their statements. They say, oh, look, here's $1.3 million in a 401k. Right. Or maybe some in Barney's name, some in Betty's name, but you add it all up. 1.3 1.3 million. And if you notice on their statements, it says Barney, 800,000. And then on Betty's statement, it says Betty, 500,000. Mm-hmm. Or maybe the other way around, whatever. Right. Right. But you add it up, it's 1.3, and it's their names on the statement. And I had the conversation. I said, You know, do you guys own a home? They said, Yeah, we have a home. What's the value of that home? Well, here we are in Austin. A year ago, it was worth five hundred, but I think it's worth eight hundred right now. If I sell, it's not two million because the price of real estate's gone crazy. So I'm like, fair enough, whatever. Just call it worth eight hundred thousand. Huh? Do you owe anything? And they said, yeah, I think we owe about two hundred and thirty thousand. I said, great. Well, let me ask you a couple questions about that home loan. First. Is it like one of these variable rate contracts or is it a, a fix, like a 30-year mortgage fixed rate? What, 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 do you, what do you have? Oh, Mike, we have um, actually we refinanced uh, recently because rates were so low. We actually have a 15-year fixed rate. Wow. It's fixed at like 2% or something for the next 15 years. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. So I said, okay, so here's what I'm hearing you tell me. Your mortgage is 230. It's at 15 years, roughly 2% a year. Your payment's the same. The rate's the same. Nothing changes. Is that correct? Yep, that's how it works. 
are you sure that's how it works? I mean, <laughs> like, could the bank come to you and say, you know what? I know that you owe us 230000 on your $800,000 house, but you know what? We, we've decided we don't like that. And we think we're going to increase how much you owe us. You now owe us three hundred thousand on the house, not two thirty. Could your bank do that? No, of course not. Well, could they maybe change the interest rate because they just feel like it? Like you know, we set this deal up with you at two percent for fifteen years. Eh, this isn't really working out for us. Right? Could can the bank change the rate? Maybe change the length of, of no. the loan? Can they do any of that? No. No, they can't. Of course they can't. Right. I mean, it is what it is. Unless you decide to make a change, it's 15 years, it's 2% and you're just going to pay it down during that time. Right. Yep. And they're like, yeah, that's it. So $800,000 house, $230,000 loan. This is set in stone. So what we could say is with your home, we would say that that would represent debt that is stable and that you control. Yes. You are the one in charge. You are, you're in control of that debt. You pay it. You can pay it off early if you want, but it's not going to get bigger unless you choose to make it bigger. The rates, the, the nothing changes unless you choose to change it. Is that a fair statement? That's fair. Yeah. And Barney and Betty our fictional couple who are not related to Fred and Wilma Flintstone, <laughs> they say, yeah, that's exactly the case, Mike. Mm -hmm. I said, great. Let's compare that to your 401k where you've got 1.3 million between you. And right now I know it only says your name on these accounts. So just like your name is on your house, which is worth 800,000 now, your name is on these accounts. They're like 1.3 million. But here's the deal. You've got debt. Just like you have debt on your house, you get debt on this 401k. But the difference is with your house, the debt is linked to a bank. With your 401k, it's linked to the IRS. Mm -hmm. Every time you pull money out of there, the IRS, they're going to take a chunk, right? But here's the difference with your bank, who controls the debt with your bank? So what did we say? Barney, Betty, you control the debt. Yep. In other words, it, it doesn't change unless you choose to change it. What about the debt that the IRS has in the form of taxes on your 401k? Who controls that? Not Barney and Betty. Yeah. Do you control it? Nope. No. Who controls it? IRS. Yeah. The IRS are more specifically the bozos <laughs> in Washington, D.C. who don't know how to balance a checkbook control that debt. <laughs> yeah. And unlike a bank who actually has to balance you know, their accounts. Mm -hmm. The bozos in D.C. don't. And so if they've decided, oh, we've decided to spend a bunch of money and we, uh oh, we, we don't have enough money to pay for it. Uh -oh. What can they do? With a stroke of a pen, they can raise taxes. They're talking about it right now. Mm -hmm. And the minute they raise taxes, as you like to say, Zach, boom. <laughs> what happens to the debt on your 401k the minute they raise taxes? Skyrocketing. It goes up. Yep. It goes up. You don't control the debt. It's kind of like the bank on your house deciding, oh, your loan's 230. Ah, we've changed our mind. Let's make it 300. That's what it's like. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is if you want work to be optional, if you want to either retire or just maybe keep working because you want to, not because you have to, you absolutely must have a plan in place to deal with that debt mm -hmm. and your retirement accounts when you're retired also known as taxes. What is your plan? What are you doing to take over control of the debt on your retirement accounts instead of just sitting there and letting the IRS do its thing? Yep. And whether you use Roth conversions or maybe move money to insurance, we might talk about that a little bit later. Also tax-free if you do it right. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what's your plan? What are you doing? And that, by the way, it brings up, hey, I, I want to make sure I let you guys know this. As you're listening, you might be sitting there saying, man, I want work to be optional. But in order to really make work optional, you, you have to make intelligent, smart, well thought out financial decisions. 
Hi, and thanks for checking out Retirement Today. If you like the content we share on our channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can stay notified about all of our latest content and videos. Be sure to share all of our information with your friends and family as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.